Perhaps this video will make you seriously question the foundations of your beliefs, and you might even experience a bit of an existential crisis along the way. Today, we're diving into one of the most complex and puzzling paradoxes ever conceived by humanity, the paradox of knowledge. Naturally, this will be a philosophy-heavy video, so stick around until the end to gain a clearer understanding, all right? Let's get started. Time travel has always captured our imagination, and for good reason. The idea of visiting the past or the future challenges everything we know about cause and effect while raising deep philosophical questions about the nature of reality itself. One of the most fascinating concepts tied to this is the bootstrap paradox. To understand it, imagine spending years of your life building a time machine. After much effort, you finally complete it and decide to test it by traveling to the past. There, you meet a younger version of yourself who is struggling to build the very same machine. Feeling sympathetic, you hand over the complete instructions that you brought with you. But wait, where did those instructions originate? You were only able to build the machine because you received the instructions in the past from a future version of yourself. It's as though the machine has no real point of origin. It simply exists. This is the bootstrap paradox, where something seems to be both the cause and the effect trapped in a self-contained loop. And here's the twist. This paradox doesn't just happen in science fiction. It also shows up somewhere we all know, human knowledge. When we try to justify what we know to be true, we often run into the Münchhausen trilemma. This philosophical puzzle, named after the legendary Baron Münchhausen who claimed he pulled himself out of a swamp by his own hair, highlights how difficult, perhaps impossible, it is to justify knowledge without falling into one of three traps, circular reasoning, infinite regress, or dogmatism. Let's start with circular reasoning. This happens when one idea is used to justify another, and then that second idea is used to justify the first, forming a closed loop. Imagine someone asks, why do you trust your watch to tell the correct time? You respond, because it's synced with the official time. But when asked how you know the official time is accurate, you say, because it's adjusted by the most precise clocks. If the reasoning eventually loops back to your own watch, you realize you're stuck in a circle, never truly arriving at a definitive answer. This kind of reasoning pops up all the time. In religion, for instance, you might hear, God exists because the Bible says so, and the Bible is true because it's the Word of God. Even science, despite its rigorous methods, can encounter circularity in the foundational layers of its knowledge systems. Physics, chemistry, and biology all rely on each other, forming a web where every strand supports another, yet no clear starting point exists. Now consider infinite regress. In this scenario, every justification relies on another, which relies on another and so on, endlessly. Picture building a house of cards where each card depends on another for support. Without a solid foundation, the entire structure collapses. Philosophically, this is like asking what caused the universe. Someone might say the Big Bang. But what caused the Big Bang? And what caused whatever caused the Big Bang? The chain of questions never ends. Some thinkers, like proponents of infinitism, argue that this isn't necessarily a problem. What matters, they say, is that there's always another explanation, even if we never reach an ultimate answer. It's like exploring a fractal. The deeper you go, the more detail you uncover, yet you never find the end because it's infinite by nature. Finally, we have dogmatism, the decision to simply accept something as true without questioning it. It's like saying, believe this because it just is. While this might seem frustrating, it's often essential. Mathematics, for example, relies on axioms, truths assumed without proof. Without these foundational assumptions, advanced calculations would be impossible. 
Rene Descartes, one of history's greatest philosophers, embraced this approach when he declared, I think, therefore I am. For him, this was an unshakable truth from which all other knowledge could be built. But dogmatism has its limits too. How do we choose which basic beliefs are trustworthy? And what if we've chosen the wrong ones? The Munchausen trilemma leaves us in a tough spot, suggesting that all our justifications are flawed in some way. Now let me pause for a second. If you're enjoying this discussion and want more thought-provoking content like this, hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. It's quick, easy, and helps the channel reach more curious minds like yours. It's crucial to understand that the trilemma isn't just an abstract philosophical idea. It has real-world implications for how we think and live. In science, for instance, the trilemma surfaces when we try to justify fundamental theories. Science progresses by testing hypotheses, but the foundations of these hypotheses often rest on assumptions we take for granted. Think about the laws of physics. We know they work, but why does the universe follow these laws and not others? And who decides what's fundamental? Another example is artificial intelligence. AI systems are trained using data based on human assumptions about the world. But what happens if those assumptions are biased or flawed? In that case, the AI ends up perpetuating errors that were never properly questioned. The Munchausen trilemma also appears in moral debates. How do we decide what's right or wrong? If we rely on cultural or religious frameworks, those frameworks themselves require justification. And digging deeper inevitably leads us back to one of the three problems posed by the trilemma. Despite its challenges, there's an intriguing perspective known as fallibilism. This idea suggests that our knowledge is inherently fallible and incomplete. We may never achieve absolute certainty, but we can get closer to the truth by continuously refining our beliefs as new evidence emerges. It's like building a bridge. It may never be perfect, but it can be strong enough to get us across. A fascinating example comes from the history of science. The old theory of the ether was once used to explain how light traveled through space, but it was riddled with issues. When Einstein introduced his theory of relativity, it replaced the need for the ether with a more coherent explanation. This shows that our knowledge is like an ever-evolving construction project. We tear down old ideas, add new ones, and keep moving forward. In the end, perhaps the most important lesson isn't about finding definitive answers, but about learning to navigate uncertainty in productive ways. After all, whether in science, philosophy, or life itself, true progress comes when we never stop questioning. So, what do you think? Which of the three options in the trilemma resonates most with you? Or are we all just stuck in an unsolvable paradox? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.